Thanks, Sonny. You look marvelous. Okay. Oh, there's the camera. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my backyard here in Northern California. I'm Amanda Haas, and if you don't know me, I have been with the Traeger family for a couple of years now, and can't believe that we found a way to bring all of this fun to you while we're all sheltering in place and we're at home trying to enjoy our families and our homes. And I can't think of a better thing to do than cook and use my Traeger and share my knowledge with you today. So thanks for tuning in. And besides being a Traeger team member, I'm a cookbook author, and I actually came across Traeger when I was the culinary director at Williams Sonoma. And I got to test the Traeger grill and absolutely fell in love with it. So I joked that I was a customer before I started doing anything with Traeger. But because I cook for a living, I feel so lucky to get to combine my worlds now. So I'm the owner of Amanda Haas Cooks, if you want to check that out online. But I'm also, like I mentioned, a cookbook author. And my newest book is called The Vibrant Life, Eat Well, Be Well. And basically most of my cooking reflects kind of where I live here in Northern California and my philosophy that foods can either make you feel great and some foods can make you feel really terrible. And so I try to take the ingredients that make me feel really good and cook food that tastes so delicious you don't even know it's good for you. So I love doing all the things on the Traeger that so many of us are good at around here, like brisket and ribs and all of the things, but I'm leaving all of that to the pros that you've seen in some of these classes already. Um, Chad and Diva Q and Matt Pittman. And today I'm doing something that's totally me. It is a pan roasted sheet pan dinner of salmon, spring vegetables, and fresh pesto. And the thing I love about this is this entire meal comes together on the grill in 10, 10 minutes. The whole thing cooks in 10 minutes and it's very easy to put together as well. Also, I've got two teenage boys who are running around. Hopefully you won't hear them during this, but we are always looking for easy, healthy, delicious dinners we can have together. So that's what I like to focus on especially since we're all at home right now. I'm trying to work during the day. They're supposedly in school. We're all running around all the time. So I like to figure out what dinner is and, and get right to it and make it easy for us. So please feel free to ask questions along the way today. It is Facebook Live after all. I have my social distancing partner in crime fielding questions for me, my neighbor who's pretty much the only person I've seen this whole time outside of my children. So Sunny will be asking questions to me and I'll answer them for you. Also at the end, uh, I'll answer more questions at the end and if you, we don't get to them, don't worry. You can DM me at Amanda Haas Cooks on Instagram and I'm always happy to respond. In fact, I really do try to respond to every question. So let's get cooking. Today I have my Ironwood 885 cranking. I don't know if you can see how beautiful it is and hot here today. It is crazy gorgeous. Um, and I'm putting it on 500. So one of the things I love about the grills and the Ironwood and the D2 technology is they get so hot. They heat up really quickly. And for a dish like this where I want really high heat and I have to open the lid once, the temperature will drop a little bit, but it bounces back so fast. So I have just fallen in love with the Ironwood as my workhorse. I use it for everything. And the 885 has enough space for me to do multiple things at once. So today I'm gonna to do this sheet pan salmon with the vegetables, but I'm gonna grill a couple lemons on the side directly on the grates, which is nice. And then I went ahead and I grilled some other lemons already so I could do some smoked lemonade to have too. So that's what I'm enjoying while I do this demo for you. So I preheated it to 500 degrees already. And let's start with the prep. Okay, it is springtime. Asparagus is in season. And so I grabbed some of that at the store. One of the things too is that if you're only going to the store once a week now, I try to buy things that last pretty long. So even my perishable things. There's certain fruits that last longer than others, obviously. Apples store really well. Sumos and other types of citrus. And then for veggies, asparagus stores really nicely. I also have some sugar snap peas in here and those do as well. And then I have some cherry tomatoes that I've already cut up. So let me show you how I prep those for this. Okay, asparagus. White asparagus you need to peel. Green asparagus you don't need to peel. But they have kind of like a bristly stalk that's not very tasty. So little trick, if you bend it and it snaps, 
where it snaps is the part you don't want to eat. So you can certainly go through and snap each piece individually, or you can save some time and just eyeball it and cut the bottom third off of each asparagus stock, okay? I needed a garbage bowl. I forgot to do that. That's one thing I love to do when I cook is I always make sure that I have a bowl out just for the scraps of food so I can put them straight into the compost. Just call it my little garbage bowl and you don't have to keep stopping to throw things away or move around a lot. Okay, little pro tip here that I learned along the way when you write books and you're photographing your food. Cutting things on an angle on the bias just makes them look a little bit prettier. Uh, I always love ideas to make your food look good that are really low effort. <laughs> so this is one of those things, right? So I'm going to put this in with what I've cut. Sunny over there, how's my social media queen coming? Are we, do we have any questions? We have questions. Ooh, let's hear. Can the recipes in your book be adapted for the grill? I am so glad you asked, whoever you are. This is the coolest thing about my last, actually my last two books. At least half of my recipes were developed to be able to go on a Traeger. I always joke that if you can put it in an oven, you can put it on your Traeger, and that's how I live. Uh, I use my Traeger like an oven, and I use it like you're going to see right now. I cook everything on it, and so absolutely. In The Vibrant Life, I'd say I, I'll have to go through at least 50% of these were designed to be Traeger friendly. and. If you have one of the grills with this amazing D2 technology, the temperature is exactly as it would be in an oven. In fact, they're finer tuned, so the timing should be great on the recipes for you as well, which I love. So yes, all the way. I mean, I bake on my Traeger. I was gonna try to pull off a dessert for you today as well, but too much. Okay, those are my tomatoes. I don't know if you noticed, I just cut them in half. They're gonna get blistery and they'll kind of melt into the other vegetables and the salmon, and it, it's almost like a sauce. When
sorry for the technical difficulties, but that's what happens when we're working at home, right? So where was I? I was working on the vegetables and just sharing with people that if you wanted to substitute a different type of fish, you certainly could. You could do halibut, you could do tuna, anything that you like. And I've got my asparagus and tomatoes, and then I just bought some sugar snap peas, which hold up for about a week in the fridge as well. If they have their stems still on and you don't like that little string, you can certainly pull it off before you cut them. It's kind of a fun little task once you get used to it. I'm trying to find a good one, but most of these are in pretty good shape. It's not gonna be Dave. So anyhow, let's cut these on the bias as well. And we're gonna put those in with the rest of it. Now again, if you don't have any of these vegetables, it's totally okay. You can substitute what you like. I've done it where you do carrots and snap peas, a little bit of garlic in there is delicious. But whatever appeals to you, just make sure you cut it down to a size that'll cook pretty quickly. All of these things are gonna cook in around 10 minutes, just like the fish will. Now today for seasoning, I'm using olive oil, salt, and pepper because I really want the pesto to be the star of the show. But if you're just wanting to do something really simple that's delicious, I was looking at all of our Traeger rubs and I like the fin and feather for this one. The funny thing is, is I don't necessarily match them to what they say they are. Like I put this veggie rub on everything. I really look at what the main flavors are in the spice rubs and I go from there. So take what you like, but this one would be delicious on the salmon today and even sprinkled on the vegetables. But like I said, we're gonna keep this pretty basic because I want the pesto to be the star of the show today. So you will always see me seasoning with salt as I go. You can always add more. It's pretty hard to take it away. Um, but I think it's what th makes the difference between a good cook and a great cook, is someone who knows how to season their food properly. So we're just gonna give this a little mix. See how simple that is? Anything that's a sheet pan recipe where I can do it all in one, I'm in love with. And so I've really gotten used to this technique. And once you master it, then you can use any ingredients that you like, okay? So let's put that there. And then I'm gonna get the fish out and let's talk about that. Oh, also, I think somebody was asking me what pellets I'm using. I am a huge fan of apple. I use apple a lot because I love the sweet flavor, but I think it's, it's neutral enough to go with a lot of foods. I did my entire Thanksgiving meal with apple pellets and I love them. So you can definitely get those on the Traeger site. If you go to Amanda Haas Cooks too, I have just apple pellets in, on my shopping page along with the grills that I love and it'll just take you straight back to Traeger as well. So the fish, it's hiding. Okay, I've done two things for us here. I've got some that I already cut up and that's what it's gonna look like for the recipe. But then I've got a whole side of salmon too that I wanted to share with you to show you how to cut it if you do it yourself. Sometimes you can find salmon when they haven't cut it that's on sale, so it's less expensive if you're willing to cut it yourself. You could also use frozen pieces too. I love that so many stores now uh, sell it frozen in four ounce pieces like this and you just take out the ones you want. Just make sure to defrost them, of course, before you use them, okay? It wouldn't be good going onto the grill frozen. So. Let's take a look at this. Oh, we have a question. Yes, Sunny. Is it best to use skin on or skinless? It's like somebody knows what I'm going to share with you. Is it best to use skin on fish or skinless? Totally up to you. I always cook with the skin on because I think it adds a ton of moisture and continued flavor. So whether you like the taste of the skin or not, cook it with the skin on if you can. I'm going to teach you two ways to cook it today. If you cook it skin down, what will happen is it won't crisp up. And when you go to serve yourself the salmon, it'll just come straight off of the skin. And so you don't have to eat that part. But if you like a crispy skin, which I really do, I just cook it skin side up and it gets really crispy and delicious and you can serve it that way. So there's something for everybody. It's my favorite trick. And as I tested this recipe a couple times over the last few weeks to get ready for this, I really thought it was awesome skin side up. So do what you prefer. Okay, I'm going to put these aside for now, and let's talk about this big, beautiful piece side of salmon. And get another cutting board for it. You know, when you're dealing with animal proteins, you want to make sure you're using a separate board than anything you're doing your veggies on so you don't cross-contaminate. And um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I've got this piece of parchment under it, which is totally fine while we cut it. It's so nice to be able to work back here in my yard and have this kitchen space. I, I pretty much can do everything out here. 
Okay, so you can see this beautiful side of salmon. Love it. But this part, this belly part is thinner and there's more fat on it. It's delicious, but it's just gonna cook a little differently than the thicker piece, right? So you could do a couple things. You could cut straight across this way and leave that on, or you could cut some of this down so that you have pieces of, that are more of an even thickness, which is what I wanna do for you today. So I'm just gonna cut this off. And in fact, I cooked this recipe with the smaller pieces already today and I can show you. So if people like the thinner pieces, they cook really fast and they're really delicious. Sometimes I'll just save these scraps and then I'll saute them in a pan for breakfast with a little bit of olive oil and veggies and other things and it's so good. Okay. Yeah, Sunny, another question. Can you refreeze the salmon after you smoke it? I don't like to refreeze it after I've smoked it, no. You could buy it fresh and freeze it. So if I bought this fresh and I wanted to portion it because I got a great deal on it, I would cut it and then I would wrap it really well in saran wrap so there's no air put it in a plastic bag and seal that too, and then store it in, in little pieces so that you could use it later, okay? But no, I would not freeze the fish that's already been smoked or cooked. Yes, another question. What type of salmon are you cooking? This is actually, thank you for asking, what type of salmon is this? This is a farm-raised Pacific salmon. If you can get wild, terrific. But it's really interesting because different, uh, when it's farm raised versus fresh or wild, they have really different textures. This is one that's raised without antibiotics, which I'm always looking for. And it's awesome, but it's much thicker fleshed and it takes a lot longer to cook. There's a higher fat content in it because of its diet than something that you were gonna find out in the wild. And so just pay attention to that. I like my salmon cooked through and this is probably gonna take about eight to 10 minutes. Whereas if you were doing a thinner one, um, that's leaner, it could take more like six to eight minutes, okay? So you'll see, I'm just going across this and cutting even portions. And this is gonna be the batch that I do after this one. But let's skip ahead and I'll show you the batch that we already have. And here we go. I also have, I guess it's a good time in the world to have lots of wipes. I have uh, soapy water down here for myself too and wipe my hands. Always, if I were inside, of course, I'd be washing with hot soapy water uh, before handling anything else between the fish and the vegetables and the other things, okay? I'm gonna get rid of that knife too because it touched the fish. Okay, so let's take the fillets that I've already cut. We're gonna bring them to the sheet pan. I'll answer another question in a minute, but I don't know if any of you have checked out the new Traeger app. It is amazing. It just launched last week or the week before. And if, even if you don't have a Traeger and you like to cook, I would download the app. There are so many incredible recipes on there and they've gone and taken so many of us that work with Traeger and we've shared new tips for cooking. There's so much more than just grilling on that app. It's amazing. So check it out, I love it. Hopefully we'll get this recipe up on the app soon too. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure Traeger. Okay, let's build this sheet pan. Sunny, do we have any questions while I do this? We do. Yes. Um, can you use this recipe with haddock or halibut? Yes, absolutely. I, you know what, I don't use haddock a lot. You certainly could. Halibut, definitely. Definitely, it would be delicious. It would hold up really well. There we go, stay. Sorry, the wind is kicking in. Okay, I already brushed a little bit of olive oil on these. I'm gonna do a little more. Let's do a little more, actually. I use my hands a lot when I cook. I always say it's, they're my best tool. I like to feel things and know that things are even. I just tend to wash my hands a lot. Um, but this is, it's great to use a brush on something like this so you know everything's coated evenly. Also, to keep things clean, you could certainly use tongs and not have to touch it at all. Okay. So you'll see, when I season, I like to season from up high. That's because if you're down low, you get a really concentrated space. And when you're up high, you can spread it out more evenly. It's just a nice little trick as you practice. Okay. Yes, question. Um, do we always cook at 500 degrees? No, I'm cooking at 500 and I tested this three or four times last week. And actually Austin, one of the cooks at Traeger tested it at this temperature too. And we agreed that we loved it at 500. For some reason, because there's enough fat in this fish, it cooks really quickly and it doesn't dry out and it allows the skin to get crispy. So typically my instincts would tell me I would do this recipe at like 400, but try it. If you can get your grill to 500, which most of the new ones you can, it's awesome. 
Give it a try. It's really, really delicious that way and nothing dried out. But let me prove it to you, right? Because I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so for some of these, like I said, I want the skin up. For some of them, I'll put the skin down. I'm staring at my son, Charlie, over there. I think he's probably a skin down kind of guy. You don't want the skin, Charlie? No? Okay, he's also my timer today. So when we put this on, we're going to time it for five minutes because I'm going to grill some lemons to go with it. It's going to be awesome. Let's just put an extra piece on, right? Let's make room for this one. Okay. Question. Yes, a question. Is it better to buy fillets or do you suggest sourcing the whole side? Um, it depends on how much you want to use. It depends on pricing. You know, I look at, oh yeah, do we, do people suggest buying fillets of fish or a whole side? I bought a whole side because I wanted to make this for a bunch of people. And like I said, the less work butchers and fishmongers have to do on a piece of fish or a piece of meat, um, the less it's going to cost you. So if you get a side of salmon, it's probably less per pound than if you bought it portioned out already. So totally up to you. You could certainly serve this. You could roast it as a whole side as well if you like that for presentation. This one I just like for the easy weeknight meal in my house and it cooks really quickly this way. Does that help? Okay, so I've got my fish. I'm going to sprinkle a little salt on this side too. Oh, but I lied. I said I'd do some skin side down. Let's flip half of them, okay? And then the vegetables. So I am just going to spread these around the fish. I'm not going to put them on the fish because we don't want the fish to steam. We want it to roast, right? So you don't want to crowd this too much either. You need a little bit of space and air, room for air to circulate so everything cooks well. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is spring in a pan, on a pan, on a Traeger. <laughs> okay. Question. Yes, another question. Are there other pellet flavors that work well with um, for salmon and fish? Yes, absolutely. Um, I like cherry a lot too. Um, I would probably actually only do cherry with a stronger flavored fish like salmon that could hold up to it. Alder is a really good one. My personal favorite is one that I think we're sold out of right now. It's called the Winemaker's Blend. It's so delicious. If you like heavier wood too, you could do mesquite or do something heavier that's going to really give you that woody, deep, rich flavor. Totally depends on what you like. So if people are new to cooking on a Traeger, I like to start with kind of more uh, neutral wood flavors. Just So I think a lot of people assume that everything's going to taste really smoky and that's not the case at all. So this is just going to be a delicious start with the apple and we'll have to see what my friends and family think too. What's okay. the covering on the pan? The covering on the pan. It's like you guys are doing my job for me. Thank you. So important. I use parchment paper, unbleached parchment paper all the time on sheet pans because you know why? It makes cleanup so much easier. So you can buy it in rolls. You can also buy it in a roll. I think I have one down here. I'll show you before we're done where it pulls off into individual sheets that fit these sheet pans, which is brilliant. So for baking and roasting and anything like that, even for cookies, put one down first. It will make cleanup a breeze. The other thing is you can use Traeger butcher paper for this as well, which I have by the yard around here. So I use that Traeger butcher paper when I'm putting things on the grill, even without a sheet pan. So like if I wanted to do a side of salmon, I could just put it on a piece of that butcher paper and put it directly onto the grill grates. Or if I'm doing something where juices are gonna be formed and I wanna keep those juices, I'd just put that butcher paper right on here as well, okay? All right, in it goes. Charlie, my timer, five minutes, because we're also gonna cut a lemon and we're gonna put that on there really fast. We're gonna put it. We're gonna put it, oops, tags on it. Is it best to cut it in quarters or slices? We're gonna cut this in half because I'll show you. I'm gonna put these directly on the grill grate and they're gonna caramelize and get so dang juicy and then we're gonna use them to put over the whole meal. Also, you'll see I'm putting them close to the front and the sides. This is the hottest part of the grill. So if you wanna sear something, I always do my burgers or anything where you really want those grill marks and that hot sear towards the front and the sides of the grill, okay, instead of in the center. It's just how the heat circulates and it's a really great trick. Yes, we have another question. What drink pair pairings do you suggest for this recipe? Okay, so I am drinking the Traeger Smoked Lemonade right now, like I mentioned, which 
is so delicious because you can grill lemons, squeeze them, and add a little bit of the smoked syrup, and it is so yummy. But I do like anything citrusy with it. So if you wanted to do a cocktail, which we'll be doing afterwards on Instagram. I'm going to get on there with Chad Ward, also known as Whiskey Bet Barbecue, and have a cocktail and break this whole thing down. So you could certainly do a cocktail with citrus. I'm going to try one with tequila after this today. Um, if you wanted to do wine, I would do probably like a Pinot, like a lighter red or a richer white. Beer would be delicious too, just depending on what you like. Um, have any limits around those things but right now I feel like it's cocktail season at least here it is because it's so warm and gorgeous already right so stick to citrus can't go wrong yeah another question what other veggies would you uh, suggest adding um I like carrots I like sweet potatoes I could also you could just do little florets of cauliflower or broccoli and they roast up really quickly and they caramelize and they're so amazing Charlie, are you timing me, sweetie? There should be like three minutes on this, okay? So it really does come down to picking what you like. I roast every vegetable on earth on my Traeger and have great results. And so pick what you enjoy and go from there. What else? Other questions does while the, I make the pesto. Does the sheet pan affect the taste? Does the sheet? I do not think so. I think that, um, no, I don't. I, does the sheet pan affect the taste? No, it does not affect the taste of this recipe. In fact, I like it because, like I said, it traps the juices of everything. So if anything, it makes it juicier and more delicious. What type of knife are you using? I am using a Zwilling knife, which I finally, on my own website, put everything into one shop that I like. I love these, I don't know, these feel so traitor to me, these... Um, Pro Oak Home Handles. I love them. So this is a Zwilling 8-inch chef's knife. And I use this size and I use um, probably like a 5-inch utility knife, which is serrated more than anything. Oh, and a Santoku knife. I love that shape of a knife too. I use this for veg prep. I use it for meat prep. And I have a thinner uh, knife that I use that's better for boning and for also cutting things really thinly. And that's about it. I mean, I don't use a ton of cutlery, but the ones I do use, I love. And I keep them sharp. Okay, we're making the pesto while this cooks. And this is really easy. Thing is though, guys, if you would rather buy pesto at the store right now, that is so fine. They have so many great ones that are already made. And they're usually sold next to um, fresh cheeses, cream cheese, things like that. So grab a little container of pesto if you don't feel like making it from scratch. But if you do, it's really simple. I've got some garlic cloves that I just smashed to take off the peel. And then, oop, the lid. This is what happens when you're cooking backwards, right? Okay, let's see if I can pull this off with my food processor backwards. Yep, I'm just going to pulse it to break it up a little bit got that okay now I've toasted some pine nuts toasting them is totally optional I like the richer flavor it's just something that I've become accustomed to in certain parts of Italy they don't to toast their pine nuts totally is up to you you could also use walnuts if you like walnuts um, and for that matter I'm gonna use basil today but you could certainly use a different green if you prefer as well okay so I'm gonna put those in and again I'm just going for a little bit of a rough chop here just trying to break them up Now, one thing you'll notice on this, I know I said it's really important to season your food, but I'm not going to add too much salt to this at the beginning because I want, I'm adding cheese. I'm added, adding grated Parmesan and that's really salty. So I'm not going to add it until I've tasted it at the end with the cheese mixed in and we'll see what we think. Okay. Are any of your recipes on the site? Yes. Are my recipes on the site and they're on the app. So my claim to fame, which is kind of funny, has become this curry roasted cauliflower. Has it been five minutes, Charlie? Okay, thank you. My son's trying to tell me, take the lemons off the grill. Let's grab these, excuse me. Um, so yeah, if you go to the app or the site, there are two sections. You can put, you enter my name and you can find my recipes. Um, but a lot of them are on there and I think I wanted to develop this recipe because we didn't have something like this on the site yet and it's just how we love to eat and so we'll hopefully get it up on the site soon i'll ask and i'll let you guys know on instagram tomorrow if we can get that up on the website or up on the app too because on the app they have so many recipes now that are step by step laid out for you i know i did that cauliflower i've done sweet potato i've done so many fun recipes so i can't wait to share with you 
Can you see how gorgeous this lemon is? That's what I wanted to show you. So I'm just gonna take these off quickly. They actually, I'm gonna leave the other two on as an experiment just to see what they look like. And then Charlie, you're gonna time it for like another few minutes, right buddy? Okay. Sunny, any other questions while I put the basil in here? You guys will notice that I'm doing this at the last minute, pulling it off the stem, otherwise it turns brown really quickly. Um, how long are you gonna keep the fish? Uh, 10 minutes total for the fish. And the thing that's so amazing, I, you probably can't see it on the camera, but how quickly that temperature is bouncing back from when I open the lid. If you can keep the lid closed as much as possible, and when you open it, open it for the shortest amount of time possible, you will save yourself such a headache because it really helps uh, keep the temperature where it's supposed to be. And every time you drop it, it's gonna make your recipe take longer to cook, and you won't get that beautiful sear that we're looking for, okay? So, of lemon. Oh, of course limes would work instead of lemon if you want. You could certainly substitute limes in this uh, dish. It would be delicious. And uh, I use limes all the time. I grill limes a lot too to make like vinaigrettes or marinades. I made a marinade this week with just grilled limes, a little bit of olive oil, uh, chipotle and adobo and some honey. And it was delicious. Did you ever smoke salmon? I smoke salmon all the time. And you know what? I think I have a smoked salmon recipe on the app. I know I have a vodka brine salmon recipe I did. That's a Traeger recipe that's a big hit. It's delicious. Um, so yes, I, lo I love salmon, period. I, I eat salmon almost every day of my life in some way, shape, or form. Smoked is certainly one of them. What else, Traeger family? I think if you're new to Traeger too, it's so nice to realize that you can do so many different things on this. You know, I love it for all the reasons everybody else does, for the typical things like ribs and barbecue. Um, and I certainly make those things, but I just use it for the most practical applications for breakfast, lunch, and dinner around here, and dessert for that matter. Okay. What's the finish temperature suggest for salmon? I think we write it to say 145, and that's if you want a little bit of pink in the center. For some reason, this is ever since I had children, which has been a long time, I like my salmon cooked through now, so you're going to see me take it past that. But the thing I love too, which I didn't show you yet, and I'll show you, is that these grills have the probe thermometer that you can use and keep it in, and then you can use the app to see what the temperature of your food is, and you can be anywhere and check on it. It's so remarkable. And so if you're new to cooking or if you're uncomfortable cooking things like steaks and fish, you should use that probe thermometer and it will get it exactly to the temperature that you want. And you can even pick, oh, I want medium, I want medium rare, I want well done, so it's pretty awesome. Okay, I'm gonna just pulse this really fast. You can see I added the basil and a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to just stream in some more olive oil. Let's see. It's really about a texture that you like. I'm putting in a lot of olive oil because I want to be able to kind of like drizzle it over everything. Could you use something besides basil? Yes, you could use, could you use something besides basil? I've actually made pestos with arugula that I think are delicious. So you could do that. You could use, um, people use kale. They use bitter greens. You could certainly use other herbs. Um, I'm a big fan of making other green sauces. We call it hot sauce because I'm constantly doing chimichurris and things like that. Um, but I use parsley, basil, cilantro, a combination of them, and they're delicious. Oh, wait, I didn't add the cheese yet, friends. Hold on, that's the gilding the lily. And on that note, you don't have to use cheese if you don't want to use dairy. You can certainly go without, and it's more of like a basil oil. It's just, and like I mentioned before, too, what did you ask? It's been five minutes. Pardon me? Five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, so it's time to check the fish. Thank you, timer. You guys are so helpful. I'm not double dipping on anybody, I promise. Mmm. So, it's delicious, but it does need salt. Do you ever use a salt block for the fish? Oh my gosh. I haven't used a salt block in ages. They're awesome, and they are awesome on the grill. So the answer is yes. If you haven't seen a salt block, there are literally these huge chunks of salt you can buy and you keep it on your grill and you can cook things directly on them. You can also serve things raw on them like ceviche or sushi and it picks up a little bit of the salt flavor. Shrimp is great on this and see what we think. I'm gonna have a sip of my lemonade in case there's pesto in my teeth. Other questions while we take a look at this and I'll check the fish. Do you have to heat up your cookie sheet first? No, I do not. 
heat up my cookie sheet first. That's a great question. I heat up my cookware if I want to see it. Just if you're going to use a salt block, do not salt your food. <laughs> it's extra salty. Let's try a little bite of sear something. So if I want to sear something on, oh, look at this. If I want to cook in cast iron on here, I'll put my cast iron pan on the grill when I cook, when I start cooking and turn it on. And it always um, is a really good idea, like for bacon, for steak, or even I'll do burgers in a cast iron pan and I preheat it. But for something like this, you don't need to. I just want to make sure everybody can see how beautiful this is and how easy that was. They came together so quickly. So now we're just going to finish it off with the pesto. Where can I find the recipe for the pesto? Um, the recipe for the pesto, we'll post one for you. So let me get one up on the site. I bet there's already one on the Traeger website, but I'm happy to post this one for you as well. So like I said, I want to encourage people to make it from scratch if they want to, but you could certainly buy store-bought and that's fine as well. Um, the coolest thing about this is that I have a little jar that I made a couple days ago. You can put it in the refrigerator and see there's a little bit of olive oil on the top. That will help it keep its color. And this will last for like a week in your fridge, okay? So pretty fantastic. Okay, let's get this out of the way and we are going to plate our finished product. Let's see. I do have a plate. There we go. It's hilarious trying to organize all of this stuff myself. I'm usually so spoiled. Team Traeger, but we figure out how to get it done, whether we're here or at headquarters. What other cooking questions do you all have for me as I plate this? Do you like to pair dill with the salmon and how do you use it? Okay, I recently have become a dill convert. I never liked it and I can't even tell you why. Never liked it growing up and I think it's delicious now. So absolutely. I'm trying to think what I did with it the other day. Oh, you know what I did is I used it um, in conjunction with um, a couple other herbs and a yogurt sauce for these lamb burgers I did. I think my lamb burgers might be on the site as well. We'll have to find out. If not, I'll add them. So yeah, dill would be delicious with this. Um, you could sprinkle it on afterwards, though I wouldn't put it on before you cook because it'll just get kind of gross looking, but it'll be delicious if you just sprinkle it on at the end. What okay. is your favorite method to cook fish on the chicken? If not the sheep pan. If not the pan. You know, I think the best fish I've ever had on the trigger and I kid you not was here it was a weekday when my kids used to be in school <laughs> I turned on the grill to 450 threw down a piece of butcher paper I took a piece of salmon olive oil salt and pepper and I just let it go for like 12 minutes it was the most delicious delicious piece of fish I've ever had in my life so I think you'll find that for me the simpler the better the preparations I really just want the food to kind of speak for itself and um, that's why like this this is a very Amanda recipe and that you won't see me doing a lot of fussy stuff to uh, great ingredients. Excuse my hands here, but the only person who's going to eat this is myself and maybe my children who have been stuck with me for two months now. <laughs> and Sunny, yes, my beautiful neighbor who our kids are, we always joke that we're the same family anyhow. My last name's Haas, their last name is Bliss, and so we call ourselves the Blosses. And the Blosses, thank goodness for the Blosses, because we take social distance walks to town. <laughs> We're getting to know each other better than we ever thought we would. Has anybody noticed that I think I still have one cap of a lemon on the grill? Let's see what it looks like. But how beautiful is this? Oh my gosh, let's see. Yep, there it is. Oh my gosh, it's so juicy. This is ridiculous. See how juicy that is? Like you couldn't, you could take a lemon or a lime that wasn't even ripe enough and it would be amazing after you grilled it. So look what we're gonna do here. We're gonna squeeze a couple, squeeze a little bit. Oh, I forgot to give myself some veggies over here. Let's do this. I'm gonna load my plate up and then finish it off with that pesto and it's going to be amazing. What else can we do with the pesto? Oh, the pesto, a million things. So this week I've been making it a ton and we put it on pasta. I've marinated chicken and shrimp in it and grilled it. You could serve it like you would with like a green sauce, like a chimichurri and drizzle it over other things. You could put it on a sandwich. So like instead of mayo or an addition to or mustard, you could do pesto and it would be so good with Gosh, almost any flavor combination. You can do chicken, roasted peppers and onions. So good. 
Um, so yeah, and then also pesto can freeze if you don't put the cheese in before. So if you have a ton of fresh basil, you could make a batch. Just don't fold in the Parmesan before you do it. And then put it in ice cube trays and you can pop out a cube or two when you want it and defrost it and then mix in the cheese and it's absolutely delicious. Okay, how are we doing here, folks? What do we think? Pretty delish? We're gonna get the pesto out. Can you use a cedar plank method on your grill? You certainly can use a cedar plank method on your grill. You know, it's funny because now that I cook on a Traeger and I can get the wood flavor if I like it, I don't find myself, you know, kind of using cedar much, but you certainly could, absolutely. Okay, we just need the pesto, friends, and we're in business. You know what, I'm gonna use this one because I wanna show you another little trick, which the test kitchen at Traeger taught me when they went to photograph this. Clean spoon. They took the oil from the top of this and just drizzled it over the fish itself, right? Just so a little bit of a visual difference than the pesto that's gonna go on the veggies, but you still get the pesto flavor, all that basil, yum. This is so gorgeous. Let's get one for mine over here. What was the finished temperature on this one? Ooh, we should take the temp and see. My guess is it's more like 160, 165 because I cooked it through. So if you like it a little bit rarer, I would put the probe in and go to like 145, okay? So watch, now I'm just gonna drizzle this pesto all over this. Oh my gosh. This is a day where it's good to be related to me, I joke. My kids always have to eat my mistakes as well. <laughs> Today, what do you think, Sunny? I'm sending you home with dinner, am I not? Yes, please. Yes. How about artichokes? Can I use, how, do, how would I cook them? Oh, okay. Do they want to cook whole artichokes or are they saying, could you use artichokes in this recipe? Because in this one, it would be a little trickier. How would I cook artichokes with this meal? You know what I would do? I still like to kind of parboil my artichokes first in a pot of water to soften it up. And then what I would do is I would cut them in half, remove any of the tough leaves, um, and the tough outer leaves as well. And then I would smoke them. I put them on the grill at like 185 or 200 degrees and get some smoke on them for probably 20 to 30 minutes. And then I'd crank up the heat and just brush a little olive oil on them and let them get crispy at 450, 500 for like five minutes. They'd be delicious. So delicious. You really don't need to do much um, if you get great produce. Okay, what do we think? Gorgeous? Such a fun, easy weeknight meal. I have to try it myself, of course. And, uh, and drum roll please, right? I would probably sprinkle some pine nuts or some basil leaves on this too if I had them, which I do somewhere, I'm sure. Could you do this recipe with meat? Oh, absolutely. What meat? Well, you could do it with chicken very easily. You could do it with um, chicken breast or chicken thighs. If you did chicken breast and you wanted it to cook really quickly, I would do it off the bone and I would cut it in half horizontally so that it would cook really quickly. Or you could cut it into smaller pieces and do that. Um, you could certainly do it with steak as well. It becomes more almost like a stir fry. You know, I would take like a skirt steak or something like that and cut it into small strips and cook it and it would be delicious. So sure, do whatever you like. That's what the best part is about this. Once you master the method of cooking something on a sheet pan on your trigger, you can add, substitute, do whatever you like. Should I taste it? Let's see what we think. Oh, first of all, the salmon skin is crispy, which makes me so happy. But let's get a bit of all of these flavors together. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I love my job. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm like, this is my job? This is ridiculous. The vegetables are delicious. They're not overcooked, which I love. So the asparagus has some crunch. The tomatoes are yummy and soft like I want them. And the snap peas still have some snap. Let's see. Oops. How many grills do you have? Oh, do you really want to know? Repeat the question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. How many grills do I have? At the moment, I have five. We'll say I use four because I don't know if you noticed my friend Piggy, who's over here, this grill. I always joke that I don't covet for much in my life and I don't want for much. I'm so obsessed with this grill, I had to have it. And I think they just got tired of me asking at Traeger. And so Piggy is now, we call her Poppy. My old neighbor named her, we had a naming contest. 
And she's just my girl buddy. She just hangs out. But she's a fully functioning Traeger, which is amazing. But what you can't see is, I, <laughs> it's a joke. I've got a Pro Series, which I still love. I've got a big timber line and I've got a smaller timber line. And in fact, I, I used all four of those grills to cook Thanksgiving for 55 people. So when people say, do you really need it? The answer is absolutely I do. <laughs> so that's it. Mm. Who has other questions about this sheet pan salmon with roasted spring vegetables and pesto? Anybody? How do I get the crispy skin on the fish? You cook, to get crispy skin on fish, you cook it skin side up and just put a little bit of olive oil on it. Salt and pepper is what I like and you cook it at a super high heat. So 500 degrees is what I did on this, which is awesome. It's almost like, you know, if you were to put something under a broiler at that high of a heat to crisp it up at the end. But the one thing you want to do is you want to eat it pr pretty quickly after this. If you let it sit, it will soften up again. You can always put like a kitchen torch to it, but I'm not going to go to that much trouble. I'm just going to eat it right now. Do you have any smoked salmon recipes? Yes, um, we have a ton of smoked salmon recipes on the app and the website. And I encourage you to go to TriggerGrills.com and check them out because they're um, rated, customers can rate them, and they're awesome. There's n no other place you should look for a smoked salmon recipe. What's the most unusual thing you've cooked in your Traeger? Oh my gosh. When I started with Traeger, I started cooking, I mean, I was doing like a dozen recipes every month. It's the most unusual thing. I'm thinking the most delicious dessert. I did a peanut butter pie with dark chocolate, like a, almost like a magic shell dark chocolate shell on top. Charlie, I don't know if you remember that one. So delicious. It's on the website. Smoked mac and cheese. Oh, mac and cheese. We're saying I make so much mac and cheese for my older son. He's obsessed with me doing it on the grill. Um, I think what's most new, un, most unique about what I cook on the Traeger is that I just put everything on it, right? So everything from my protein to my veggies to fruit crisps. And because of the convection heat, you can cook all of those things at the same time on the same grill. So there's a great picture that has circulated around Traeger since I started. This was my first day on the job. And we took a picture of me making a side of salmon, chicken, vegetables, like roasted veggies, corn on the cob, and a blueberry slab pie, all on the grill at the same time. And it was all incredible. So delicious. What can you use with the Traeger butcher paper? Pardon me, what can you use with the Traeger butcher paper? So I use that butcher paper like I use parchment paper. But it's also a really great tool if you want to, I'm trying to think how to explain this. If you want to cook something, but you want to make sure you're getting as much wood flavor as possible. So instead of putting something on like a sheet or in a roasting pan, I'll just put it, I'll just put that paper down directly on the grill and cook the meat on that piece of paper. So I was talking about doing it for salmon. You could do it for fish. You can do it for chicken. Also, we use it to wrap our ribs, and when you want different cuts of meat to rest, um, I use it. I, <laughs> I use it as a tablecloth. <laughs> I use it in many creative ways around my house, but I would also use it to line anything I'm doing on a sheet tray. So cookies, any baked goods like that, any roasted veggies. It won't affect the flavor of how things come out, but it's just going to make cleanup so much easier for you. Can you use fennel with your cinnamon? Oh, fennel with the salmon would be delicious. Now I'm like, why didn't I do that? I have a recipe in the Vibrant Life that is a sheep pan chicken with fennel and orange and a little Dijon mustard and coarse mustard and onions. And you marinate the whole thing and then you roast the fennel and the onions and it is spectacular. So you could certainly do fennel with your fish and it would be awesome. Other questions? What cuts would you suggest for a half butcher? What cuts would I suggest for a half butchered pig? That is a curveball, my friends, because I've actually, I've, I've never been a restaurant chef. I've always written cookbooks and ran a test kitchen, but I wrote books for other chefs. And so it's an interesting job because you're supposed to interpret their recipes for them. And one chef uh, made me butcher a pig and a lamb with him. And the thing is you can cut D depending on where you live, people cut animals for different cuts, right? And they call them different things. So cuts in Europe versus cuts here are totally different. So if you get a half a pig, <laughs> I think you're going to get all the basics, which is awesome. But think of what your favorite cuts are, and you could probably request to have them cut it like that for you to make sure you get chops, make sure you get a big slab of the belly if you want to do bacon. You could certainly ask them to keep that in one big piece if you, uh, if you <laughs> prefer to cook it like that. 
however you want. Last two questions. Last two questions. And then we've got an after party happening. Did you use your gold touch roasting pan? Did I use my gold touch roasting pan? I bet this is someone I know. Yes, I use my gold touch roasting pans all the time on here. They're indestructible. So yes, and if that's my friend Mike, I'll crack up. If not, yes, I love gold touch pans. They're um, really durable, non-stick, and I use them for everything. Final thing to cook, favorite thing to cook on the trigger? Um, I'm going to go, favorite thing to cook on the Traeger, I'm going to go crowd favorites here, greatest hits. My kids would tell you skirt steak with my chimichurri sauce, and I would do my coconut oil dark chocolate brownies, which are so flippin' delicious, and every time I make them, people eat the whole pan, and a side of my curry roasted cauliflower, which is up on the app, and so delicious. People so, want to see you dance. Oh, who wants to see me dance? Okay. If you know me, you know I love to dance. And when I'm shooting videos, typically, when we're not rolling, I'm always boogieing. And my friends at Traeger are just like me. Doug, my friend Doug, we're always dancing. And so I'm saving the dance for the after party. And here's what's happening. <laughs> we're gonna hop over to Traeger Girls Instagram Live. And I'm gonna have, um, I think we're calling it Traeger After Dark. We can call it Traeger Midday in the Hot California Sun. And I am joining Whiskey Bent Barbecue, otherwise known as my friend Chad, for a little chat. We're going to talk about what I made today and what's coming up in Traeger Live next week. And Chad, game on. I'm going to see if you'll boogie with me. So I don't know where you are right now, home in Florida. We're going to dance. Um, and we're going to each have a cocktail that we're going to make and we're going to have some fun. So in a couple minutes when we're done, head over to Traeger Grill's Instagram. You can also follow me at Amanda Haas Cooks on Instagram. And uh, we'll both go on together and we'll have some fun and maybe I'll show you one of my best dance moves. You can get them as gifts if you enter Traeger on uh, your phone when you go to add gifts to any pictures on your stories and I'm always dancing. That's how you know it's me. So if that's it, I hope that everyone will tune in over on Instagram Live on Traeger Girls account. I just wanna thank you for spending some time with me today at my home in Northern California. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and that I've inspired you to maybe try something different on your Traeger today. And if you have any other questions, you can always DM me at Amanda Haas Cooks and I'll get back to you. So thanks Traeger Nation. I'll see you soon. Bye. Enjoy.